This is a pair of 15 by 70 overwork astronomy binoculars that I'm going to test out in this video. These binoculars were made by a company called Oberwerk, which is German for above work or meaning above the rest. Given that name, I thought they were going to be German made, but they are not. Oberwerk is a U.S. company headquartered in Dayton, Ohio, and founded by Kevin Busaro. He saw a pair of giant binoculars in a Newport Beach camera store but they were almost $4,000, so he ended up buying four pairs of them from the manufacturer in Kunming, Yunnan province in China. From there, he started selling the giant binoculars under the brand name Overwork. And eventually, he entered into a joint venture with that Chinese company, but that ended in 2013. From that time to the present, Overwork binoculars have been manufactured at a new plant in Kunming exclusively for overwork and at the direction and quality control standards of overwork. So overwork binoculars are manufactured in China, but you won't find that written anywhere on these binoculars. It seems like they want them to seem like they're US made, but they're not. But that's okay because these are very high quality astronomy binoculars. And according to Oberwork, every pair is tested by Kevin Busaro at the headquarters in Dayton, Ohio. And you receive the binoculars with the handwritten inspection list and each pair is laser engraved with a serial number, which is nice in case they're stolen. These are 15 by 70, which means that they have 15 times magnification and each objective lens is 70 millimeters. And the binoculars are fully broadband multi-coated. The multi-coating minimizes reflections and scattering so that as much light as possible passes through the binoculars to your eye. And every air to glass surface is multi-coated. And the broadband part means that the coatings are as efficient as possible across the entire visible spectrum from 400 to 700 nanometers. And they use high quality BAK4 prisms, which is a high quality glass transmitting more light, giving you a brighter image in low light and better sharpness and detail across the entire field of view. All binoculars show a correct image. And so of course, these can be used during the daytime for terrestrial use but they're kind of heavy for daytime use, and that's why I'm calling them astronomy binoculars. Since they have 70 millimeter objective lenses, it's like having two 70 millimeter telescopes. They weigh 4.4 pounds or two kilograms, and they are 10 and a half inches long. They have 12 millimeters of eye relief, and they have a right-sided diopter in case your vision isn't the same in each eye, and they have a nice center focus, which I really like. It's a little stiff, but not too bad. And they have a 4.2 degree actual field of view, so you get a nice big swath of the sky to see. In all binoculars, the exit pupil is the objective lens divided by the magnification, so 70 divided by 15 is 4.6 millimeter exit pupil, which means that's how much light will exit, exit the eyepiece onto your eyeball. They have a nice wide range of interpupillary distance from 56 to 74, which is very nice for people with eyes that are close together or far apart. And their poro prism design, which means they have a prism inside that sends the light over here as opposed to roof prisms, which send the light straight down. All large binoculars are poro prism design. They're nitrogen filled, so they won't fog up, and they're waterproof. And they come in a nice metal box, and they include a strap, which I threw away because binoculars this heavy, you're not gonna be putting them around your neck unless you want a neck strain. <laughs> you must put them on a tripod or a mount, and they come with this L tripod adapter so you can put them on a mount or a tripod or you can use a universal strap like this. They have slip resistant 
armor coatings, which is nice to the touch, but trust me, at 4.4 pounds, you will not be holding them in your hands for long for astronomy. The handshake would make the viewing unpleasant. Finally, the eyepieces are threaded to accept one and a quarter inch nebula filters, which is really nice. I bought these for 319 US dollars, and that's a great value for premium binoculars in this size. I've used them during the day, and they're great. The image, even at dusk, was bright and clear and sharp, but now let's find out how they perform at night, because that's what they're really meant for. It's not dark yet, the sun just set a while ago, but I wanted to look at Venus to see if there are false colors. It has a little bit of green fringing at the bottom. Now let me see how it looks in the Resolux. In the Resolux, it has some pink fringing. I have to say it's not as bad in the overwork. I have this thing about chromatic aberration. I cannot tolerate it. It just drives me crazy, but Neither one of these binoculars are ED binoculars, so of course there's gonna be a little bit of false colors. ED binoculars would cost twice as much as what I paid for the Oberwerk or the Resolux binoculars, but it's not too bad, and the image is nice and bright. It is Venus, which is negative four magnitude, but it's a nice, clear image. So, so far, it's doing great. Wow. Beautiful. Now I'm looking at the double cluster in Perseus, a great target for binoculars, and it looks beautiful. Beautiful in both binoculars. Very cool. Now I'm looking at NGC 457, a star cluster in Cassiopeia. It looks really nice. I wanted to look at the North American Nebula, but this thing doesn't go to the zenith. I'm going to put the overworks on the parallelogram so that I can look at North American Nebula. Very, very cool. Okay, I saw the North American Nebula. This has a four degree field of view, so Deneb and Kasi or Kasai, however you say it, the whole thing fit in there. And incredibly, I had two UHC filters, so I could put one in each eyepiece. Very neat that you can do that. It did fog up a little bit, even though it says it's fog proof. Uh, it snowed overnight, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. But the view, very clear and bright and very impressive for the price point. Wow, oh my goodness. Well, as long as I had the filters in, I put Seder in there to see if I could see IC 1318. I wasn't sure if I could, but I can see some of the, some of it. Um, but I did have to refocus after putting the filters in, and that focus wheel is stiff. But the view is pretty good and bright and clear. Now I'm looking at the Andromeda Galaxy. Very cool. The whole thing fits in the same field of view. Very neat. Now, for a big test, let's see if I can see the Triangulum Galaxy. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is very cool. Very, very cool. M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. Well, I tested out these Overwork 15 by 70 astronomy binoculars during the day and at night, and I'm very impressed with these. For this price, they're an outstanding value. In addition to being a backyard astronomer, I'm an expert birder, and since binoculars are the tool of trade for birders, I've owned and used many binoculars in my life. Leica are the absolute best binoculars made, but birders use 10 by 42 
While most people say that the best size for astronomy in a binocular is 10 by 50 or 7 by 50, but I think 10 by 42 works equally well. But 15 by 70 allows you to get more magnification and to go even deeper into space and gather more light for fainter objects. But why binoculars at all? Well, two reasons. One is that if you're just starting out in astronomy, you should try out binoculars before considering a telescope because it's much easier to locate objects in the night sky with that big field of view and that's why your finder scope is usually 50 millimeters. And using binoculars will help you learn the sky and learn how to observe before diving into getting a telescope. Second reason is that using both your eyes is just more comfortable. We humans have two eyes and we're just accustomed to looking at things with both our eyes. So it feels more natural and you can see more by using both of your eyes. Some astronomers only use binoculars because they're so much more portable than a telescope. And you can see a lot in the night sky with just a simple pair of binoculars. So if you're in the market for some high quality astronomy binoculars, then I highly recommend the Oberwerk 15 by 70 binoculars. They were excellent. I bought these binoculars because they had a single focus knob. The Orion Resolux are excellent binoculars too, but you have to focus each eyepiece separately and that annoyed me. I only have two small complaints about the Oberwerk binoculars. One complaint is that at first I thought the focus knob was stiff, but now I realize it's not stiff, it's that I can barely reach my finger <laughs> across the focuser. I'm a little person, what can I say? This probably won't bother most of you at all. The only other negative thing about them would be that they had a little bit of chromatic aberration when I was looking at Venus. But I would not be using binoculars to look at the planets. You want high magnification to look at the planets. What astronomy binoculars excel at are objects that are just too big for a telescope, like the double cluster or the North American nebula or the Pleiades, the beehive cluster, things like that, where chromatic aberration is not going to be an issue. For what you pay for these binoculars, a little bit of chromatic aberration is to be expected, but for this price, these are very high quality binoculars, and I highly recommend them. I'll see y'all in the next episode. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.